Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, my name is Coffee Break, and I am here to bring you the Coffee Cast Amateur Edition of Tuesday Thursday Night. And with me, I am not casting alone on this matchup. With me is my own hell. How are you doing today? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Yeah, just had a bunch of crazy errands to run, but I'm home now, and that's all that matters. Amen. In this match, we will be bringing you the Terran Titan T, spawning as the Blue Terran in the 7 o'clock position here on MLG Shattered Temple. And over on the left-hand side, spawning at the 8 o'clock position, we have Aronius, the green Zerg player. Now, Mitch, my own hell, whatever your name is supposed to be, my bad. Whatever. What is the one thing that we can both say that we know about Aronius's play? What unit does he love to use? That would be the Mutalisk. Amen. Mutalisk, Mutalisk, Mutalisk is what Aronius likes to do. And with these close by air positions, the Charizard will be able to make its way over here pretty quickly, I'd say. But anyway, looks like another scouting <laughs> with that Overlord. <laughs> Indeed. Aronius will know exactly where T is, and if he doesn't pull that Overlord back, T will know where that Overlord is, and thus will know where Aronius spawned. And once again, this close by air position is really going to favor this Mutalisk play. I feel Aronius picked a pretty good map for his playstyle. What do you think about it? I think it is a very good choice as there's only one tower in the middle of there, so that'll affect a lot of things. He'll be able to spread out with his creep, getting more uh, view over the map, and T might just have some trouble. Uh, I'm kind of babbling right now, aren't I? Anyway, uh, No, that's good. That is exactly what you want yeah. to do. And whereas T might have some trouble with uh, just kind of holding off all the mutilus karask. Exactly. Yes, Thank especially, you. especially because as you mentioned, that was a very good point to mention. Zelnaga, not Zelnaga. These there is only one Zelnaga watchtower on this map. So if Aronius can keep control of that Zelnaga watchtower, and if he has mutilus out on the field. He will have 100% map vision, and T will be in the dark the entire game long. Exactly. And that is uh, never a good thing. How long will this SCV survive? I am taking bets here. Uh, I will give it to 430. Really? Uh, yes, yes. I, I'm feeling adventurous because I'm just waiting for these Zerglings to pop up. Oh, crap, the queen! Run, SCV, run! I don't want to be wrong! And we do have, no! we do have a Roach Warren down from, from Aronius here. That's a little bit interesting. Together in our SCV depot. Oh gosh, way to bring up a nice little husky reference there. We do have a factory now on the way for T. I would not be surprised to see a reactor dropped on that barracks so that we could get reactored Hellions coming out. And that Overlord was dropped by Marines, so that's an important mention to make as this is early game and Aronius needs all the supply he can get. Absolutely. If you can let that early Overlord live, that is always a nice thing. It is kind of the sacrificial Overlord where a lot of times you just have to expect it to die, but it is never, never nice to lose that Overlord. Oh, what's this? I see here a Roach Warren. Uh, he could be going in for an early push here. Indeed. And actually, I was wrong about T's build. We have a reactor going down on the barracks. Yes, indeed but a tech lab going down on the factory, so it looks like we are probably going to be seeing some siege tank play, as there is a second factory on the way. Siege tanks, if Aronius goes with his usual strategy of mutilists, that might not be the best decision, but hey, he's a player here. Indeed, and you really don't want to be playing to the macro game, not the macro game, what is the word, the meta game, where you right. just expect what your, play, your opponent's going to do, and here's T making a fool of me. He actually makes that second factory to land on the reactor in the first factory to get Infernal Pre-Igniter. So, we will be seeing Blue Flame Hellions in this matchup, and I like that. I think Erroneous is making it an attempt to distract T here with Chad while he moves these Hel uh, ah, Hercules into position. Just roaches? <laughs> well, he moves these Hercules into position. I believe that would be the wrong mythology. That would be that would be Greek mythology. So that kind of fits with the Thors. Now, the Blue Flame Hellions are not going to be very effective against these Roaches. And Erroneous uh, complaining about not having a build order, but I think he's doing just fine in this matchup. Uh, I don't like those Roaches. No, they are perched rather menacingly there, aren't they? Those Marines are going to get slaughtered, and that Hellion isn't going to be much help as it, as it only does extra damage against non-armored units. Exactly. And Glenn, 
uh, Erroneous? Not really sure what he's doing. Okay, there. He goes in for the full attack now. There are two more Hellions. He might be able to stave this off. Not looking good, though. Now, Erroneous... Yes. Yeah, well, I, I was just going to say, Erroneous does actually decide to back off. This Blue Flame not quite finished, now just finishing at the end of that battle. And that puts T in a very good position, because if you look on his uh -oh, edge, he really has uh, he has a command center that just finished up. And Erroneous has no second base down yet. So if But he does have about eight roaches coming towards those hillions. Yeah, oh my goodness, yes he does. He has 12 roaches on the field right now. That is a lot of roaches for such a small force. But if T can hold this off, he will be in a good position. But holding it off might prove to be a little bit difficult. What I would suggest for T, if I were in his shoes, would to make, make a planetary fortress as quick as he can on his natural here. But it seems a little bit too late for that, as the roaches are already spreading into his natural. Indeed. Now, we do have Concussive Shells and Marauder out on the way. Uh -oh. If that Marauder can spawn, it'll be a very nice position for T. Oh, and he, he does get a Siege Tank out, which does a lot of extra damage versus the armored. And it looks like T might hold just fine in this battle. Ooh. With that Siege Tank gone, I'm not so sure. My goodness, these two Marauders are just got taken out. And now all the Go SCVs are pulled. Go! T just really needs to buy time for this one last Marauder to get out in the Siege Tank. He's trying to get as many units out as he possibly can. And the Tech Lab falls now. Erroneous is taking an expansion at the top middle. So if T can't hold on, uh, if T does manage to hold on, he won't be too far behind. That Siege Tank oh. does fall. Oh, uh, here comes more Roaches. That's it. it I'm giving this game to Erroneous because with that early push, he just basically put the nails in the coffin. T was going for a long-term build, whereas Erroneous was, let's finish this now, so... Indeed. Now, T has almost no mining going on right now. He has a little bit going on in his main. However, he's lost so many SCVs. He has lost, actually, only four SCVs so far. However, he's about to lose more. These roaches still looking to be pesky, killing a lot more SCVs, running around, doing a little dance with them. Now, going back to target fire that Marauder, and these SCVs really wish they had Stimpak right now, I would bet. And, uh, on a side note, what is this overlord doing in the corner here? It's kind of been bothering me. That looks like a very lonely overlord. It's actually, if I were to take a guess, it would be there to spot any sort of drop play. And actually, T just managed to get another tank out, and he's mass repairing it with four SCVs. We got two more Hellions out, and it looks like he might be able to kill a couple more roaches. I don't know if it's going to be enough. It's going to be really close, though, with these Hellion with these SCVs repairing that T tank. It's doing a lot of damage. It's taking a little bit of damage, too. But two more roaches fall. Another roach is going to fall. And it looks like T is going to do, make a miraculous hold in this battle. Two roaches run away. The T tank could actually go onto the glimp and pick a couple off. T with a miraculous hold in that battle. That was incredible. I have to give props to T, because I thought Erroneous had him, but dang. Absolutely. <laughs> and now, if he can get the second base into an orbital command, he would be able to get two, uh, two times the mule power, which could be pretty much the deciding factor in his comeback in this matchup. Now, you do see that he is getting a missile turret up, and I think that is a great follow-up, because a, a great way to follow up a roach all in like that is to go for some sort of play like, oh, I don't know, Mutalisk, to try to kill a lot of SCVs and get back in the game. Mutalisk, Erroneous, what? Yeah, who would think about that? Now, Erroneous did get 11 workers killed in that game, in that, in that battle, in that game, whatever. Uh, in the Lewis Lost tab, you see it relatively even, but actually, uh, a little bit in Erroneous' favor, T is at 2,800, Erroneous at 1,200, uh, 2,000, not 1,200. So, all in all, the players are actually on a fairly even footing. In my opinion, Siege Mode upgraded. Uh, I don't know. Aronia still had, had all those workers killed, and look at all these roaches coming in. Indeed, that is a lot of roaches and zerglings. If you look at the harvester tab, once again, if T can hold on, he actually has 30 harvesters to 21 harvesters, so he has a lead in that right, but there just aren't quite the units out that T needs. He has the perfect composition, but just not the numbers. Also, siege mode. That could be very important. And he hasn't started yet. There it goes. Just oh, now goes. starting. A spire on the way and for Erroneous. It's going to be a very close battle. My own hell, this is all yours to cast when this ends up happening. All right. See, I, siege tanks need to get to higher ground because these roaches have trouble. Uh, uh, move back, team. Move back. Oh. Uh, and Erroneous seems to be playing very cautiously this game, as because he's not 
willing to commit to attacks. He just seems to go in, come out. <laughs> anyway, that was a sex joke. Um, <laughs> and, uh, oh, what's this? He seems to be pulling them off. Roaches seem to be slowly dwindling, and they are gone. Indeed, that was a very nice wow. move from T. Those SCVs on that repair order, once again, kind of the heroes of the day, keeping those tanks alive as long as he possibly could, and now Siege Mode has finished up, and T will be in a very nice defensive position. The Harvest count, 35 to 29, Erroneous is catching back up, but T with definitely the higher army value in this matchup. Yep, ah, uh, jeez. <sighs> Mulus should never, be on the way fairly soon. Just goes to show you that the working man should never be <laughs> taken for granted. Amen. You never know when they might come back and put his cannon in your face. Five Mulus is on the way now, <laughs> which could be very good as there are no marines mixed into this army. Only uh, marauders, hellions, and siege tanks. Nothing that can shoot up. So that could actually put T in a very bad position very quickly. He needs to take out this base as quickly as he can because, uh, oh my goodness, erroneous. attempts to hide his drones in the corner here, hoping that he'll skim over it. Uh, and if you look one base down, you'll see another hatchery bug going up. So maybe T will notice it, maybe it won't. Indeed. Oh, and look at this lone SVV badass in it, attacking that hatchery all by itself. And with the siege tanks. Oh yeah, he looks pretty happy right there. Now we oh, do have... Oh, oh, oh. We do have five oh. mutilists hiding in the lower left corner right now. And it looks like they're going to go in and do a little bit of harassment at T's main. Now, T does have one turret up, but it's not in the best position. If Aronius just moved down a little bit, he's going to be able to get a very nice position on all these SCVs. Run! Now, uh, only one SCV has gone down so far. It looks like these mutilists are giving chase, but once again, nothing that can really shoot up. Only two Marines and another missile turret being made. These mutilists going on enters, of course. There is another missile turret there at the second expansion, and he does kill the SCV that is building the missile turret outside yeah, of the command center. Harassment inside uh, Aronius's main, uh, to hoping to push up the ramp and hopefully distract Aronius for a little bit. And I think it's I going to work. Can gain control of news natural. Because sorry, I've been interrupting you a lot. No, that's good. <laughs> I had not seen that. Now, uh, T did put a scan up in the base, killed a couple of Kree tumors, and now Aronius seems to be on the back foot in this battle, pulling all his drones! Oops, it appears I am slowing down the game. I apologize. It looks to be going perfectly fine for me. Now, all these Marauders do get cleaned up. The siege tanks are getting taken out by Mulus, and it looks like a defense for both players has been in order. Alright, uh, T's got this third expansion coming down. And that will be a gold expansion. That will be yep. very nice for him. Unless these needlelists get to it first. Indeed. Now, he really needs to start planting some missile turrets around this. Because the gold expansion, not something you want to lose once you are able to take it. Lan has also forgotten all about these droids here. This drones here. There are pirates to be. Yeah, droids. Haha. -ha. A. About A 14, 14 drones over here. Over here that he's completely forgotten. Yes, and, and that's going to severely hurt his economy. Here come the SCVs, just in time to be harassed by these mutilisks. Uh, I do want to mention that Erroneous had a very nice mutilisk split. There were ten mutilisks, and he put five at the gold, and moved five off to the side. And if those other five had been doing something, it would have been perfect. Now, these marines are going to get cleaned up. There were only four of them. A few more marines, four more marines coming into the battle, but that will not be enough to clean up all of these mutilisks. All right, looks like T is getting out an armory here. We could see, perhaps, see Thors coming in real soon, as they're really effective with both land and air units. Especially against those mutilists that mass up. Now, a lot of Marines are able to finally take out those mutilists, and that is just nice. Uh, all these drones seem to be sitting here, chilling, about to the top right of the Zelnaga Tower. Not really sure what they're doing. Yeah, wow. They're you chilling. Oh, Whoa, boy. Oh, they're... Unburrowed, unburrowed right as the uh, Terran army moved past. Now, T is in a pretty good position here. It looks like he's almost uh -oh. wanting to push, but not enough Marines to take care of all those mutilists, and he's going to lose at least one tank there. Yeah, T's, T's building an all-land army, and Erroneous is just going to keep harassing him from the air if he doesn't build more Marines, or maybe he should slap down a starport, get some Vikings out there. As you know, Vikings dominate the sky. They do dominate the sky, indeed. However, with so many mutilists on the field, the, the Vikings just don't shoot fast enough, I feel, to kill mutilists. Now, I'm not a Terran player. I could be wrong on that, but personal, personal opinion. Well, recently I've been ter playing Terran a lot, so I don't know. I don't usually slap down a starport. I don't know. Air is just not my game, so don't ask me. <laughs> Fair enough. 
Now, Erroneous, if he wants to be able to stay in this, is really going to need to either, well, both, really, A, do economic damage to T, kill some SCVs, and B, take a third expansion of his own, because with this gold base, T will not be fooling around anymore. And it appears that T is going to the top left-hand corner. Oh, and he's moving, and he's going back. Okay, what is he doing? I have no clue what is he. Okay. It looks like he is doing a dance with that Zelnaga Watchtower, getting ready to do another push into the main base of Erroneous, and T's army is looking mighty scary. He actually has Marines to counter those Mutalisks now. All right. Sitting the siege tank just outside the base. One, a favorite of T's. I've noticed that he does that a lot, and he does it really well with sniping buildings before the other player can catch wind and destroy the tank. Now these now, units really seem to clean up uh, clean up shop inside the main base of Aronius here. The Mutal is now flying back. This is going to be a latch disc effort, I believe, to try to clean up this army, but I don't know if it's going to be enough as there are quite a few Marines here and more streaming in from the back. The Marines were a little bit scattered, but it looks like they are going to be enough to take down those Mutalisks. <sighs> looks like this is just... Oh, there's the GG. Called it. Indeed, call it, but I was thinking about there it. is the GG, 106 to 38 supply, T over Erroneous. Erroneous with some beautiful roach play in the early game, but just wasn't quite able to finish off our Terran Titan. Yeah, I'd just like to say again how surprised I am that Tyler survived that roach onslaught. Just the com combination work of the uh, SCBs and the siege tanks was just really something I didn't see coming. Indeed, and I think one of the really big contributing factors to the downfall of Erroneous was the, all those drones, those 14 drones sitting in the top right that just weren't mining anything when they really could have been doing some work. That's right. Uh. Well, my own health, thank you very much for joining us here on the Coffee Cast. I hope that you had a good time. Do you have any closing comments? Uh... Nope. Okay. <laughs> Sounds right. good. Well, once again, thank you for joining us, and I hope you will be back on Thursday for our next set of amateur casts. I think I will, because this is actually quite fun. It is indeed. We'll see you then. See you later, Ben. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a warning. I'm about to turn up my volume, so turn your speakers down. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to conclude our coffee casts for tonight. I thank you very much for joining me here. I have had a great time. We actually reached 13 viewers tonight. That is the most I've had so far for a StarCraft cast. Thank you very much for joining me. My next set of amateur casts will be Thursday at 8 o'clock. And I would like to say that tomorrow I will be playing Penumbra Overture at 8 o'clock. And at 10 o'clock I will have a set of fresh professional games that I will be casting and bringing to you guys. Hopefully it will be a best of three. Once again, thank you very much for joining me here. I have had a great time tonight. If you would like to try your hand at casting, add me on Skype. I am Ben-Coffee. On Wednesday or Thursday, I will be releasing uh, some preliminary details on the Coffee Cast Open Tournament. So, and that that will be I'm I'm right now preliminary ideas will be fifteen dollar prize pool, not much, but just a little bit to pull people in. Um, I would like to advertise around. If I get a sixteen man tournament, I will be pretty happy. That is my goal to get a sixteen man tournament. If you guys could, um. Just uh, when, when I do these, let people know on Facebook that I'm doing it. Uh, go to Twitter. Um, uh, and I'm going to be uploading YouTube videos pretty soon. I will let you all know about that. Please go to YouTube and just give me a thumbs up on those videos because it starts getting more people to see those. And the more people we have is the more fun we'll have. And I could start doing more tournaments. And that would just be fun for everybody. Once again, lastly, thank you once again for joining me. Join me again tomorrow night at 8 o'clock for Amnesia and at 10 o'clock for a professional game. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Coffee Break and I am signing out.